Okay, now we have two sites created, but before we wrap up, let's add an SSL certificate to one of them. What we're going to end up doing is adding an additional binding of type HTTPS to site1.com. But you can see that when we do that, we need to select an SSL certificate. So let's go create that certificate. So if we go up to the root of the server, and we go under server certificates, this is where we can manage the certificates for the, the server. Now we see there's already a certificate called WMSVC and then the name of the box. That's WMSVC stands for Windows Management Service. That's the service that allows me to manage IIS remotely. We're going to leave that certificate alone. Now if we were doing this for a real site, we would create a certificate request. We'd fill out some information about the site. It would create a text file that's called a certificate request. And we'd hand that off to a third party such as Thought or VeriSign or GoDaddy. And then we would purchase a certificate from them. Since this is just for demonstration purposes though, we're going to create a self-signed certificate. So we'll select a self-signed certificate. We'll give it an administrative name. This is just for internal use only. So again, I'll call it site1.com. So now we have the certificate. We'll go back to site1.com, edit the bindings, add additional binding, and change the type from HTTP to HTTPS. When we do that, we see that the host name value is no longer an option as a distinguishing piece of information. The reason for that is, is that as the requests come in, the host name is still encrypted. So the IIS can't determine what the host name is and can't use that to route the request to the appropriate site. That's why whenever we buy a Whenever we have a hosted website in a shared environment, we always have to purchase an SSL certificate along with an IP address because that's how we distinguish between the different SSL sites. We specify which IP address that request is going to come into because we want to leave the port alone at 443. Now, since this is the only SSL certificate or SSL site on the box, we can leave it at all and assign. Otherwise, we need to select it the, the IP address that we're going to bind this specific site to. Then we select the certificate that we want for the use for this site. We select OK. And now if we go to our web browser, we'll be able to navigate to HTTPS site1.com. Now, the browser is going to complain because there's three things that the browser checks for with this certificate. The first one is that the date is in range. So normally you buy a certificate for one or two years. So it just checks that the time on the computer it falls within the range that the certificate is valid for. The second thing it checks for is was the certificate created by a certificate authority it trusts. When Windows ships, it comes with a set of certificates from trusted certificate authorities. Because of the way PKI or public key infrastructure works, we always know who created which certificate. The browser checks to see is the certificate for this site trusted by a, a higher level certificate. In this case, it's not because we created it ourselves. The third thing it's checking for that it's failing on also is does the host name match what is in the certificate. So here we, it doesn't really matter what we typed here because when we created that self-signed certificate, we see it's issued to the name of this box, which is plural site. Now, that doesn't mean encryption isn't going to happen. In fact, it offers to, it, it suggests we leave the page because if this was a production site, we would expect all three of those things to match. But because this is for demonstration purposes, we can say continue this website. We still see the site. The encryption process happens just like it would uh, if it was a, a, a real certificate from a true certificate authority. But it's just the browser is going to complain that the certificate is not valid because it doesn't uh, match all three of those um, checks.